Welcome, welcome back. This is the last segment of World Crisis Radio here on Friday, the 19th of June. Now, we couldn't let our program come to an end without attempting to do justice to the buffoon who has now come on the political stage. Yes, indeed. It's the Donald, Donald Trump. Now, obviously a demagogue. Uh, I think equally, obviously, a megalomaniac, delusions of grandeur, a narcissist looking for adulation. And uh, looks like there are some people ready and eager to be duped. Right? Maybe you were duped by Ross Perot back in 1992. Maybe you were duped by Obama. Maybe you were duped by Ron Paul. Maybe you're duped right now by Rand Paul. But the I think the most grotesque of all the Wall Street Pied Pipers is Trump. Now, this reference to, uh, to Ross Perot, I think, is important. Uh, you got to remember, 1992, you had the end of the Cold War, and a lot of people thought, okay, now we want to see a peace dividend. We want some fat back, right? We want somebody to bring home stuff for us. That was essentially the Pat Buchanan group in the uh, Republican Party giving Bush a hard time, Mad Dog Sr., and the Jerry Brown people and the Democratic side. And when those collapsed, there was about a third of the U.S. electorate that had nowhere to go. So out comes little Ross Perot, right, connections to the CIA, connections to the U.S. Treasury, to the Federal Reserve. They used him as a, a guy to prevent Wall Street panics by buying up things like uh, DuPont, Glorforgan. You can read about that in uh, Surviving the uh, Cataclysm. But he comes out there. He gets everybody together into a movement. He starts telling them that the main issue is a fake issue, deficits and debt. Uh, but it's not, of course. That's not the real issue. But Perot is the guy who authored the essential program of the entire uh, Republican Party. So he gets them together. He leads them out into the desert. And then he drops out. Drops out. Remember, Perot was ahead. He was leading Clinton and Bush the elder in the polls, he dropped out from July, from the end of July to the beginning of October, and then he came back, right, just to make the uh, the humiliation uh, complete. I'm thinking that uh, this is what Perot uh, is going to give to Trump, in other words, a model for how to destroy a lot of the anti-establishment activists of a whole generation. Now, we're joined by Daniela Walls, the president of the uh, the chairman of chairwoman of the uh, tax Wall Street party, and I'm wondering, Daniela, you got any well, people, new people ideas about history. Perot? Well, people forget their history quickly, right? That was in 1992. But if we go back and we read about that campaign, the similarities are almost startling. And I was really shocked that people I thought were intelligent and mature, they wrote to me in the last couple of days with disgusting drooling, fawning praise over this disgusting Trump. And I'm really v revolted that people still don't have the ability to dig any deeper than the surface and media hype and see for themselves what's really going on here. So once again, it's our job to do this for them. Your job, Webster, these uh, are the same people, like you said a moment ago, that were duped by Obama and that wasn't enough for them. They were duped by Ron Paul and then Rand Paul, and that wasn't enough. And now they're hungry to be duped again by this guy with the hairpiece. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still you too young. We do this, one of the ways we do this is through the morning briefing. right? Yes. And people need to know there is a morning briefing, right? and it's effective and it's good. It may not be exactly every morning, but it's uh, most days we have it out there. How can people there's, subscribe? Well, there's to not this? enough time in this 10 minutes for us to go through the entire party analysis we put together of Trump. We put together a four page briefing on this guy last night. That uh, was today's morning briefing Friday, June 19th. We'll have more on Trump in the morning briefings to come. This will be an ongoing analysis of all these guys coming out this weekend. We're also covering Jeb to subscribe to the briefing, go to TWSP.us and there's a button right on the side that says subscribe Armed with this analysis every morning, we think you guys can't go wrong. To join the party, write to join at TWSP.us. 
Our morning briefing is being disseminated widely. At least 10 online newspapers publish the briefing every morning and also many blogs. And not- notable broadcasters have written to both you, Webster, and I that they rely on the morning briefing to make their own news reports. Okay, and just a, a couple of other things about, about Trump, right? Here's somebody who says Greece is unsalvageable. When you want to see what a pig this character is, right? He's a neoliberal. He wants a small government. He says the role of government has to always remain limited, you know, marginal. We don't want big regulation. We want everything so that, you know, sociopaths like him can run wild. He's telling us that Greece is unsalvageable. Well, why should that be? But in the he 1990s, relied on those same debt haircuts to bail him out when during his exactly. numerous bankruptcies. So this is where the hypocrisy mm-hmm. comes to the fore, right? The megalomania and the hypocrisy that he got a, a, a billion dollars of debt, maybe not exactly debt forgiveness, but a delay in when he had to pay it. But he did that. Uh, he got the right to put second and third mortgages on all of his silly gambling casinos, right? He's been bankrupt four times, and he's up there saying, I'm so rich, I'll run the government like a business. Well, will you bankrupt it four times in, what, 10 or 20 years? Um, it's just, it's it's unbelievable. In other Look, words, Greece is unsalvageable, so the same rules don't apply to him. No, and then we get into this question of war and peace, right? He obviously hates Iran, uh, with a passion. He does not want any reasonable uh, way of uh, preserving the peace in the Middle East with the cooperation of Iran. He's against that. Seems to be a big friend of Netanyahu. And uh, not so long ago, he called for the bombing of North Korea. The U.S. should bomb the DPRK, Pyongyang, uh, as a means of preventing them from making any uh, nuclear progress. So you're dealing with a guy who his stock and trade are these throwaway lines, right? I believe we looked at his website. There are no issues on the website. So he's the two feels, most he important feel sections. To change. The two most important sections, issues and program, don't exist. It's all media and entertainment. The only tabs on his website are TV appearances. And he's all about making negotiations and the art of the deal, but he says he refuses to make a deal with Iran. And, of course, if you don't make a deal, uh, the deal, by the way, may it may actually have a chance, right? That's a little piece of news on the side, right? The Iran deal may be gaining momentum, right, again, with, with Putin helping it along. Um, but with Trump, there, there would be no way. Now, the other thing is a lot of people were duped by this 35 percent protective tariff. What he means by that is the following. When he says 35 percent protective tariff, he means that's a threat that he can use – in uh, beating down political opponents or other opposition. He cites the president of Ford Motor Company. He said, I'll threaten Ford with a 35% tariff on the uh, cars they're assembling in Mexico and shipping back into the United States. Uh, Some years ago, he wanted to use a 25% tariff to force China to let their currency uh, increase in value, right? The the artificially low value of the renminbi, he said, was was uh, facilitating Chinese exports into the U.S. But you see, he doesn't really want to implement the tariff. He doesn't want it. He wants it as a threat. And when these other people back down, right, you say, OK, I'll put my bazooka back into the closet here because you've given me what I want. He has no idea of a regulated, orderly economy where a measure of protectionism would be a permanent part of the thing, right, to prevent, uh, you know, unexpected threats. And he says, I am a free trader, says Donald Trump. The problem is is if he doesn't put the tariff in as a structural feature of a well-regulated economy, then that leaves it up to Trump, which companies he decides to personally threaten with the tariff. It's, like you said, being used as a weapon, not as a structural feature that's that's of a well-regulated economy. I guess we, the only thing we can say is that people actually have a hunger uh, to be duped, right? The, pe- the, the people who were duped by Perot, that's getting, I, I guess the, those people are no longer on the scene, right? That, again, it essentially destroyed a generation of, um, of possible anti-establishment uh, activists, right? You lead them into the, into the desert, you, you abandon them there, and they have nowhere to go. Uh, and that's going to, I think, 
you can see that Trump, you know, he's run for office right four or five times. He said he would run for president. He never did. Governor of New York twice. So it's just not not reliable. Well, that's so, your job to undo them. Thank you. And we'll uh, again that morning briefing. Uh, is is a good way for people to take part. Thanks so much to Daniela Walls, the chairwoman of the Tax Wall Street Party, who's going to be joining us uh, in the future for a number of interesting uh, activities. So with that, we got to end our program for today. See you next week.